you both for, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. yes, we can. Oh, I thought I lost you. Thank you for the contribution, the love and support. We both appreciate it. From cool. Solo G, thank you. Thank you for having us. So, oh, we're live now. Hang on a second. Sorry about that. <laughs> this, is, okay. this is perfect. All right, let me just go in here and give everybody a few, a couple of minutes to come in. I, I'm getting downloaded or something the last 30 minutes. I'm like burning up from the inside out. Let me just share it to the network. We'll roll the show out here in just a few minutes. Let's see, a couple of minutes, not a few minutes. Oh, here we go. They're starting to come in now. Gaia trees in the house. The dragon, the dragon energy is in the house. Yes, um, definitely. Yeah, we had a couple of shows with dragons last week. With Gayatri, eh? Was it, was it, I don't know if it was Gayatri or was somebody else. Yeah, I can't remember who it was now. Oh, it was uh, uh, Hung Na Gwyn. Um, I, uh, I, I just finished painting a dragon for a client as well. So definitely they've been out a lot. Yeah. Yeah, she she is uh, was born in Vietnam, and she her family they uh, went to Canada, you know, after the war. Okay. He was talking about how dragons are. We actually met her here uh, on the island. She came and said, "Hey, let's get together." But anyway, she was saying how the dragon uh, topic is discussed every day in their house. You know, kids have dragons. Everybody has a dragon. It was an interesting conversation. It really was. All right, let's see here. Okay, we shared it out to uh, some affiliate groups. Hello, everybody. A lot of people in the house. A lot of friends in the house. Jeremy, good to see you. Amir Beth, the island mate. <laughs> Quite a few people here. TL, happy birthday, TL Guadalupe and Sedona. Happy birthday Yay. to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Beautiful sister. Chris Hall, quite a few people here. It's too many for me to, to uh, <laughs> say hello to each one of them. we got a special show today, you know. Morgan's been after getting uh, couples on here, Divine Conscious Unions. Uh, we talked to uh, uh, I can't remember if it was Natalie or Nalani. Oh, there it is right there. Nalani. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we talked we, we talked to Nalani uh, on the first show a little bit about uh, her and Michael and it sounded like they had a pretty extraordinary uh, coming together I believe it was in South Africa wasn't it yeah I was in South Africa so let me just formally roll the show out and uh, let everybody know who we're talking to I know a lot of people know Nalani uh, mm -hmm. This is her, her divine partner, uh, Michael Graham Hi. McDougal. Is that right? That's right. Yes, yeah. Oh, I got it right. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, you know, we do everything just spontaneously, intuitively, creatively, imaginatively, courageously, depending on the subject matter, <laughs> and maturely. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so a lot of people um, are talking more and more about you know, some people refer to as coupling, uh, but divine conscious union. Some people use the term twin flames, twin, twin rays, and that type of thing. It's it's really, really starting to uh, show itself in this uh, transition we call ascension. Yeah, we we made a decision not to um, associate ourselves with any labels, but that's just our personal choice. That's, that's ours too. That's our yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, in the beginning we did we did look look into, into it. it like oh it's twin flame or soul soulmate soulmate yeah but but then with spending more time with each other and getting to know each other on more on a personal level takes those labels away yeah yeah, yeah. i agree yeah. you know a lot of the uh we've watched a couple of our friends uh, i think three different scenarios uh, or two at least, uh, have these extraordinary divine intervention, divine episodes where they meet, just and all these things fall in place. Was y'all 
Now you were in South Africa. Were you visiting South Africa, Nelani? Is that what um, happened? No, no. You what tell. actually happened was um, before we even met, I used to go to a um, meditation group. Um, once a week, we used to meet up and it must have been about 15, about 20, 15, 20 people. And we would all congregate in one room and just meditate for about an hour. And I had this vision of an Asian woman just standing, staring at me in my meditation. And I was like, who are you? What do you want? And I was getting nothing. I just had this vision of this woman just staring at me. And then it was like a couple of weeks, I saw a picture of her on Facebook. On a psychic group. On a psychic group. And I was like, that's the girl that was in my meditation. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my so God. That's when we just started messaging each other. And then and we it- started Skyping each other. And within three months, I was like, that's it. I'm quitting everything, selling everything I own, leaving South Africa, coming to Thailand. To wow. be with her. Yeah. So, so, so you're in a, a Facebook group at this point. You're in a you're in a group, and you just happen to see her in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, "That's the woman that was in my meditation." <laughs> so, how long did it take you before you told her that's what happened? Straight away. Straight away, yeah. pretty soon, because away, we just yeah. clicked. I we clicked so well, yeah. I was in the beginning stage of meditation and tuning into spirit guides as well, and we. Actually, my friend, who was a colleague at the time, I used to be a teacher, and she was a teacher in the same school from South Friend Africa. Well, yeah. She told me about Spirit Guys, and she told me there's a psychic group we can join to expand connection, and I did. And then that's how I met him, and he was a friend of my friend as well. We used to go to the same meditation group, the friend of ours. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And um, when he told me that he saw me in his meditation, I I didn't know anything about that. I'm like, okay, cool. But there's this strong attraction between us for Straight sure. Away, yeah. And, was, it, yeah. Was, it, was it like Kundalini barking inside of you? It, yeah. <laughs> so, so, th- so three months go by and you decide uh, you're going to sell everything and you're going to move to where she's at. Yeah. I literally did a whole career change and everything coming wow. to Thailand. Yeah, and it's been uh, August will be five years. Five years. Wow! So so you guys have actually kind of journeyed through the the uh, the expanding uh, ascension Mm. or or awakening. That's right. Actively, I know you're involved, so I know you must be involved. But I mean, you're you're in these groups five six years ago, so you've actually watched everything occur and and uh, become. Uh, a wider and wider expanse. What's yeah. that been like to observe all that and see the community grow? To, That's good. I to like me, it. to me, the whole journey is a lot more grounding for me. With being with Michael, I've yeah. learned to love myself a lot more, and he's always there, going through difficult timing that I have to go through, and up until now. And he's always there holding space for me. And you have yeah. to be patient. Patience is one of the <laughs> main keys of relationship relationships basically. as well. Yeah. yeah. Patience yeah. and communication. Now, how do you how do you guys handle like when uh, the energies are coming in really strong and you know you've got all this stuff going on and is it collective? Is it he's you? more affected by is the energies? I'm more. I don't know. I think you do go through I'd it go through too. It, but <laughs> with his own ways, like, oh, I'm tired. And he will be sleeping the whole week. <laughs> oh, no, I can't eat too much this week. And he he go through that physically. For me, it would be like mentally, emotionally, physically. <laughs> yeah. And so so you, you just hold space for him and his lack of appetite and need to sleep. And you hold space for her <laughs> in her yeah. mental, mental and emotional extremes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, I mean, because it's 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 a it's a lot of pressure for an individual. I mean, even the solstice. I mean, a lot of people have talked about this the solstice the last two or three days and how you know they've been like you know bombarded by stuff they can't understand, except for the most degree. Um, 
but uh, yeah, for to to have it with two people, I mean, you guys support each other, and it sounds like you're a little bit different in the way that the energies affect you. Very, very different. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we um we feel it differently. Yeah, um, but you also got to uh, just trust the energy. You don't um don't try to logic. Yeah, yeah, yeah anchor the logic in. Don't try to analyze yeah, it. Yeah. I I before the solstice the whole week I went through nauseate feeling I went through dizziness and I told him it feels like morning sickness and he's like oh my god are you pregnant I'm like no <laughs> <laughs> Morgan just told me she was pregnant this morning so I guess uh, kidding. I'm kidding <laughs> um, I know I'm kidding no 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 we have oh. a baby. we have a baby it's called Sology no that's it that's it oh, cool. we <laughs> our baby is the inner shell between us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to. Yeah, I want to talk about that. I want to ask you first, because uh, we I have talked to, we've talked to Morgan and I have talked to at least you know a handful of couples. Have you noticed something significantly change in your connection over the last couple of two three months? Um, for us, it's a constant shift since we met. Our interests change we find ourselves in certain healing groups and then we withdraw ourselves from it into our own inner journey. Yeah. And then a, a big leap was during our Amazon journey. And then now I feel the shift within me, a lot of self-love, a lot of acceptance. I also do feel a shift towards him as well, that now he's, meditating more and returning back into deeper connection Deep more as yeah. well so we keep things to ourselves in bangkok here is it's not easy to find those that fully resonate and that's fine you know yeah. it's like we um, uh, put our toes in the water test the water and then take knowledge from that and then incorporate it into our own being yeah. yeah, continue to be ourselves mm. and continue to flow. Yeah, and then I think with the Amazon trip and the ayahuasca journey we did together, brought us a lot closer as well. Yeah, our mindset changed. Mm. His appetite changed. Uh, we More have... respect for the body as well. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Like I've always grew up and lived in capital cities. For me, going in, living in a jungle for two months, no electricity, was the best thing I've ever done for myself. Yeah, wow. yeah. yeah a lot, a lot of reprogramming, a lot of acceptance, a lot of humility, and a lot of re yep, <laughs> a, lot <laughs> a lot of a lot of release. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say that's not an ayahuasca journey. That's like an ayahuasca lifestyle for two months. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we we volunteered. Yeah, we did a volunteer work before doing the actual oh, ayahuasca. Yeah. I got so you. we spent about six weeks doing volunteer work at the center. And not we did do Canva. We didn't do any. We Yeah, we, we went in there under the mindset of in at being at our service, volunteering. I was painting um, murals around the center. He was looking after the animals, and yeah. also we did simple chores like changing the bed sheets for the guests. Yeah, changing that, yeah. water, sweeping the leaves, help the chef preparing food and table. All of this sweeping the jungle. That was <laughs> that was, that <laughs> was a different jungle. experience. <laughs> have, have, you, uh, have you had any challenges? I mean, culturally. I mean, there's a lot of people that are doing what you're doing. I mean, we've done it. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a lot of people that are coming from one side of the world to the other side of the world to come together. Have you had any challenges uh, culturally, anything like that? So much challenges. Uh, going into Peru for us was a small culture shock, um, seeing the lives of different people in Peru, which is a very poor country, yeah. mm -hmm. and especially in Iquitos, the city, which is the gateway into the jungle was the energy was quite intense in that city yeah. for us. Um, and that's why I felt it was good for us to spend more time in that city, which we did. We, we spent did. we spent two weeks. Two weeks in the city itself before going into the Amazon jungle. Yeah. And feeling that dense energy, because people there are basically just releasing. 
and all that energy is just floating around and there's a lot of black and white magic yeah. going on of as well which is understandable it's understandable yeah. and um luckily he comes from a multicultural background in south africa mm. and also i've traveled quite a lot throughout my growing up time so uh the culture shock was there because the place was quite rough and yeah. it's a kind of place that makes you appreciate where you're coming from yeah yeah we're grateful for it and we learn to ease into the local we learn to know which to go and which place to stay away yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah we learn to eat food off the street and my spanish slowly came back he also picked up a bit of spanish as well yeah we nice. cried when we left yeah we did yeah <laughs> Very emotional when we, yeah. yeah. So you spent a month and a half of that two months. You were in the jungle. There was no electricity. There was no. We spent eight weeks. Eight weeks. Eight total, weeks. Yeah. Eight wow. weeks in total. Um, it was the best thing ever. Yeah. It was difficult. I had moments where I'm like, "That's it. I can't do it anymore. I'm getting out." <laughs> but but you can't. Not nothing beat. We practically bucket shower from the natural stream, living water. You don't yeah, need nice. soap. You don't need shampoo. Your hair just shine. Your skin just glow. Wow. Clear. Clear. Mm. Just, just the energy of the actual rainforest was just amazing. It's just so mm. so welcoming, so mother like energy, mm. and it just hugs you and holds you. Where really we good. were, I yeah. definitely feel that it was a vortex there as well. Mm. It brings a lot in. If if there's anger, you face your anger. If there's self hate, you face your self hate. And the people that we were in, they were going through their own stuff as well. And we we learn to to live in community. We learn not to take things personal. We learn to forgive each other. Yeah. We learn to love each other at the end. Yeah, learn mm. to look at people past their flaws and their pros, yeah, you know, just yeah. look at them as human beings as we all are. Yeah. yeah. All going we, through the same thing, right? Exactly, mm. yeah. And we were practically got to the point of puking, sorry, and, and shitting in front of each other, and that's fine. <laughs> as human, that's what we do, yeah, we purge, release. Yeah, yeah so. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the first. <laughs> I can see. Uh, I can there's see. No, there's no room for embarrassment in the jungle. No. <laughs> no, I was just thinking of Morgan and I being in the same situation. Then that'd be interesting. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're gonna. Uh, we're really trying to promote the uh, the frequency of, of the uh, the physical, you know, the physical materialization um, mm. of the divine coupling. I mean, again, we're not stuck on labels either. We don't, we don't, and I want to come back to that because I think that's an interesting subject and we will. Um, mm. So like, for instance, tomorrow we're going to be on uh, spirituality gone wild for the second time, specifically talking about soul merging. Uh, and the, the, uh, of course, that's been written about for years, uh, Herios Gamos, soul merging. Uh, but what happens when it comes into the physicality you know when two souls merge you know as you you experienced because you guys basically were merging for those first few months because you weren't in the physical presence but yeah. what what the you know what that generates you talked about the third energy a minute ago we'll come back to that but in in respect to your past pre pre your before your relationship we've all had relationships mm. You know, I guess what I'm what I'm saying is 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 have you uh, obviously you have experienced a vast difference in the intimacy as in the old relationships or the old paradigm? There's a lot of magic and power in it. Have you guys experienced that type of uh, uh, intimacy without getting you know? We yeah. um, for me, I definitely feel that being with Michael brings up a lot of healing in the masculine force within me. My relationship with my father ha hadn't been quite healthy. Um, 
after a second session of frog medicine in a jungle, I finally understood. I finally understood and see his perception and forgave my father. Yeah. He's, since last year, the old wounds coming up and it's been triggered by other people as well who I feel love for dearly and also memories and dreams of my ex-partner that trigger that yearning and admiration, uh, admiration and validation from masculine figure. Yeah. For me, that's a reminder of me to love myself, of returning that masculine love back to me. Yeah. And, and him being here, also mirroring that, that is possible. Although I do have a bit more feminine energy coming out of me. That's true. Then he's he's a more spontaneous one i'm the more control yeah. freak yeah <laughs> well, that's, that's how, how <laughs> that's how what yeah how we balance <laughs> yeah well exactly it's all about the polarity and i know we you know <clears throat> and morgan and i are, have talked about this stuff we have talked about how the intimacy has you know in almost really in a non-verbal way and i'm not just mm -hmm. talking about what, what we would think of and as intimacy, I'm talking about holding hands. We we put palms to palm together every night and mm. see what the universe brings. Uh, but there is certainly an element, and we I think we both knew it before we got into the relationship, before we knew each other, we both had said to ourselves, we knew there would be some type of some an sacred sexual healing uh, at a, at uh, the point of that we reached, which was to come together to find that person and so on. And that that intimacy carries such a raw, vulnerable, real frequency to it, that uh, it's, it's like a healing uh, and, and it looks nothing like the 3D sex or the, the 3D paradigm uh, love, what we would call lovemaking. Uh, mm -hmm. I've asked a few couples about it and they, they usually, just I can tell by the look in their eyes, they're just like, oh, yeah, yeah, we know about that, you know. And, and uh, something we'd like to get out there and talk about more, which we're going to do some of that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But you're, it's, it sounds like you're going through the same thing. It sounds like you're going through the same thing, is what you're saying. Yeah, I've, I've definitely feel a shift within me a lot because I, I, come, I come from an Asian culture, Thai Chinese, which mm -hmm. sexuality, sensuality is a taboo. We don't talk about that, you know. Mm -hmm. And just recently, I finally feel that I can allow myself to be as sensual as I wish to be, to be fully open, whether it's just looking to the eyes or hacking or, or lovemaking. Mm -hmm. And that has been an uplifting experience for me. I've, I cried <laughs> many times yeah. when, we, when we get intimate. Yeah, because I also <laughs> feel when we get intimate, um, I focus a lot on the the rotation of the energy yeah. between us. Yeah. As, almost yeah. as like an infinity. Yes. Waves, merging as merging one. with each other. Energy, yeah. And when I focus into that, it does feel very intense, especially yes. with our energies together. Yeah. And I can understand wh why she gets emotional. Yeah. But when she does, mm -hmm. I'm, I just hold her close. Yeah, that's <laughs> That's what I'm talking. That's what I'm talking about right there. So that same, that same uh, uh, current, you know, like hmm. the infinity sign can be felt, like you know, Morgan and I did it for a year and a half, you know, and it's not a cyber sex thing. It's not. It's hmm. just the chakras coming together, uh, and you know, of course, when we got together and we stayed celibate for up until we got married, which was a year after we physically met. Uh, mm. But my point is, is that when the impact of the physicality is thrown into that same uh, current, you know, that chakra current that you're talking about, yeah. it brings some really, really wild things. For instance, with us, it's been uh, in, in the moment and right after the moment, dimensional experiences. I mean, I know, I know that uh, you guys are polarities, but I know you must be alike in that respect in terms of Nalanese connection. I know you're very connected. I can tell, but like such as the walls disappearing and the ceiling disappearing and stars <laughs> appearing and you know data coming in, code coming in, uh, maybe a few apparitions here and there. And that's usually when she closes her eyes. I like to watch it. She doesn't. 
but uh but you know that's what i'm talking about do you find that there's that it opens up uh in you uh the receptivity for more code yeah. or more data or that type of thing yeah yeah i have to sometimes ground myself big time after yeah how <laughs> i get like very high yeah. where she feels like she feels like you've just grounded me and i'm like you just put me up there <laughs> yeah. that polarity, yeah. I, I, uh, I don't know if you've had anything like this happen i've actually seen it actually happen three nights ago i think it was either three or four nights ago and i didn't even tell her i forgot to tell her i just remember now but it had occurred before where i've gotten gotten behind her and on her her back, I actually saw light language appear on her back oh. in, an, in an illuminated manner, you know, like a kind of a goldish, yellowish. And it's just sometimes it's stationary, sometimes it moves. I don't always know what it's saying, but, you know, that's, <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that we've, uh, and we feel like we're just, like you said a minute ago, uh, in regard to the groups, we're just dipping our toe in the water. And there's like yeah. we're learning, we're learning. When we come together, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't even know what to do. We just know. We're every gonna... time is different as well. Yes. Yes. Every time is different. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know, too. I'll just I'll get off the subject because and I'll just say this, too. It's it's taboo or has been taboo everywhere. I don't know oh. of any place other than Amsterdam, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we've had our first experience of what I would call physical heroscamo, so physical soul merging, where you're in the you're in the same location with the partner and you actually have that current going. We just had our hands like this mm. and went through a process as directed of surrendering. And each time we surrendered, we would have what the human aspect would call an orgasm, you know, or a soulgasm, whatever you want to call it, or a chakragasm. Uh, to the point where when that happened the first time, which is about two months ago, I thought to myself, well, is this how it's going to be? Is this how it works? You just, you know, claps hands and that's that's the extent of it. But like you said, Michael, every instance since then has been totally different, bringing on yeah. a whole different new set of rules. And, exactly. I mean, so you you are getting you get shot up into the ethers and she gets grounded. Yeah. And, and yeah. You have, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Feel very light afterwards and she feels like <laughs> that, that's that's one thing i can say that i've noticed too is uh because there there doesn't seem to be an emphasis on a happy ending necessarily not that it doesn't happen or, or does happen uh but when when it does one thing i've noticed that's very different as a man is that my energy level doesn't go down my energy level actually goes up you know, yeah. like I want to get up and go out and do you walk around and do stuff. Like exactly. that. <laughs> and that's that's not the way it used to be. So I guess that's yeah. one of the one of the positive consequences of it. Uh, now, you talked about the the uh, detachment from labels and I we totally get that. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's uh, uh, and, and I think it's, it has a lot to do. I guess, so let me put it to you this, this way. How do you see it? How do you see it do you see it as two souls that came out of one soul or you do you see it as two individual conscious awakened people who saw the uh saw the uh, resonance and the kindredness between each other and decided to go for it how do you see that i see it as um soul partners that have always been around with each other throughout the the years and the history and that and it's could be where maybe in a past life she was my mother or i was her father or we were partners in a past life or brother and sister in a past life but i believe when you have that strong connection of soul connection like we do i believe it's a long time of journeying soul journeying throughout history that I think, well, the souls will stay with each other as long as eternity, I think. I, I see it as and, a service. And yeah, yeah it's, it's a service. service. Well. It's a service. I completely feel that we are whole within. Yes. 
ever partner, romantic or family members, friends, um, companionship, always reflect what is within us. Yeah. And um, for having him in my life helps me a lot. But the work is always up to me. Yes. Work is always within me to yeah. reconcile whatever I need to reconcile and bring within, like you said, plurality coming together. Yeah. Is, yeah. And trust. And trust and mm -hmm. going beyond labels, remove expectations. Yeah. Remove suffering of expectations, allowing ourselves to anchor new frequency in each new moment beyond labels. Yeah. And to me, love exists in all dimensions. Yeah. Love doesn't need any other labels on there. It's just as pure as it gets. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Somebody put up a thank you, Susan Edelstein mm -hmm. Blank. She said soul partners. I think one of y'all said that. I like that term, soul partners. Mm -hmm. That's, pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Have you guys had and, and soul partners also? Yeah. Sorry, soul partners as not always just lovers like we are. Soul yeah, partners yeah. can be yeah. your best friend, can be your like your pet or anything yeah. like that you know, or, or like, someone who hurts you to your core yeah. <laughs> you know yeah 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 i, yeah. I always said uh, you know uh, who would you choose you know upstairs in the higher realms when you plan to come down or who would you choose to to you know hurt you really bad but somebody that you're very close to right exactly um, yeah oh uh how what i was going to ask you now sorry <laughs> <laughs> It just threw me off on that. I'm not 100% today. I'm, I was getting downloaded. Oh, I know what I was going to ask you. Um, so just as you were in meditation and you saw her, not knowing mm -hmm. who she was, and had a what I would consider a dimensional experience, you know, it's not it's that little word, but you know what I mean. Had you guys meditate or commune together? And if you do, do you have, and even if you don't really, do you have dimensional experiences together? Um, yeah. 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 You want to go first? No, you go first. Okay. Um, ever since we met online, I would have vivid dreams of me and him merging physically, but it was, it was energetic. It was light. It was golden. It was intense. And the more we connect, we recall multi-dimensional lifetimes that we share each other we as, as share, yeah. human, as star beings. Yeah. We, um, our guides are practically like a team. Yeah. Our guides work together with each other, yeah. with us now. Yeah. yeah. Which is nice. Like, yeah. Like her guides are my guides, my guides are her guides. Yeah. 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 And yeah. sometimes I would connect with him as a star being self, one of his parallel self, Maloxi. CSB. Yeah. Now, just connect, connect in, in like in meditation or connect in dream state or? Um, both, both. I, I can tune into Maloxi energy as I drift into sleep when I need comfort. Yeah. I connect with him in meditation. And, you know, he's here with us now. And he often see me as my feline being self as well. Very sexy. Yeah. yeah. Hey, <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. Okay. So, so, so this has happened. I don't know if this has happened to you, but so what's happened to, to us is I've watched her yeah morph like uh, you know like i make a joke to you like sometimes when we when we go to sleep and i who am i gonna who's gonna be there i don't know right <laughs> i've seen her as a, an egyptian priestess uh, mm -hmm. that had a totally different form i've seen her as an kind of an indian multi-armed goddess or deity yeah. I, I've, yeah. I've actually seen her as a uh, i would have to call her like like the kali energy yeah. Which uh, her hair was black and her face was half white and black. And and I've seen oh. her morph many, many times. Uh, it's very, very interesting. Uh, and it's a little bit dark sometimes and you're wondering, but there's been times too when I've been with her and, uh, and we're, you know, we're in bed together and her head's over here. Like maybe I'm about to kiss her. But there's another one over here. <laughs> there's another one over here. Yeah. And I'm like, what? You know. So I mean, and and, and I have seen on several occasions uh, a, a feline uh, Lyrian type of, uh, and, and yeah, they are. 
Mostly it's blue feline. Blue? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you seeing <laughs> are you seeing her in the mind's eye or have you seen any morphine go on at all? I've seen the once where she was she was lying in the bath one day. I um, wasn't there. <laughs> and no, you were in the I, bath. Oh, and I okay. walked into the bathroom and I and I I literally physically saw her as this blue feline lying in this bath. And I was yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I she like shook my head and then she came back to normal again. But I was just like, yeah. wow. And, yeah. and that was very vivid and happened so fast that I was I had to like literally recollect myself, like what just happened? What was yeah. that? Yeah. And I wasn't sure of it. So and I had to go and do meditation to <laughs> to integrate like, <laughs> what just happened <laughs> yeah i can i can totally relate to that we've been experiencing this that since the, uh, about well, last summer the summer of 2018 when it really started but uh but i really picked up at the beginning of this year it really picked up a lot um yeah that's uh that's an interesting part now i'm speaking energetically here uh, I'm not going back to the intimacy. This is just an okay. energetic thing. One of the things that that's kind of come, and, and most of this, you know, the, the feminine seems to be the transmitter in a lot of the relationships that uh, yeah. that we that I've uh, been privy to. Uh, so a lot of this has come from Morgan the human downloading stuff over the years and and, and understanding stuff, but also through like. She says, you know, we're, we're, we're learning all over again, basically. So energetically speaking, we came out of this, I'm just trying to put it in these words, we came out of this paradigm of where the masculine energy was always pushing, you know, pushing, pushing his tongue in, pushing this in, pushing that, pushing energetically. And where the feminine is re re receptive or forced or whatever, but, but, that's, you know, if, if one side's pushing, the other side can't be pushing. We're finding that the, not just in the sacred sexuality, which is not just, you know, what people might think, but like in the handholding and anything that we might come across, but it's kind of both coming to a central place and like a mutual adjoinment that's mm. almost effortless. Does that make any sense to y'all? Have you experienced that? Um. Not sure. We don't think about it that yeah. much. We we practically just receive and accept as we flow along. Yeah. And everything is it is natural. Right. It's effort uh, effortless. Yeah. Yeah. But it, I see it also as like a pendulum. It's always gonna shift. Of course. It's not gonna stop and be no, always united. Moving. Always be moving back and forth. But in, but energetically, you're not you're not one's not pushing pushing. I know you said oh, no, we've learned to be in harmony with yeah. the energies around yeah. us. Yeah, we we talk about it if something feels off. Yeah, I I would tell him that if he comes home and I feel a bit okay, there's something funky, perhaps. Yeah, right. Yeah. you know, yeah. and and yeah. sometimes when I get really angry, he's like, "You're giving me a headache. You're giving me a headache." I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> So it's yeah. Do do you do you, do either or both of you take time alone during those times of misalignment or when you're out of alignment? Mm -hmm. uh, um, I'm yeah. I'm always need my space, and I think that's my artist side as well. That I like my space, like I can just focus on what I'm doing and and just be free. He also has his own interest. Mm. I have my my my. My, my me time is when mostly in the mornings. Yeah. Um, I get up quite early, about five o'clock in the morning, and I'll just go sit outside under the stars and just, yeah, like clear my mind, you know, and yeah. just, I feel very, like I always connect myself to Mother Nature a lot and Mother Earth's frequency. Mm. I feel that, you know, even though we, our energies merge as one and, and blending in, uniting plurality, individual space also bring balance. It does. It does, it does. Yeah. 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 And then, and then, so you, you, you actually have this space in, in light of the polar, polarities. 
uh, you know each other well enough to know who's got this strength and who's got this strength and so on. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, when we first met, um, it wasn't that difficult. We like the same type of music, we're the same age, we both share similar interests. Which is helps, yeah. It, it helps, it helps. Like we, mm. we just, we don't even need to talk to each other. We just get it telepathically. Right. Yeah. yeah, especially after, after the, the years that we've been together now, we find that a lot of our thought patterns are joined. It is joined. <laughs> a lot. It is and joined. Like, she'll yeah, say something yeah. like, I was just thinking that, or if wow. I would say something like, I was just thinking that. Yeah. Like yeah. We've, we've synchronized so well together now. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, and you guys have been together for mm. most of five years, right? Yeah. Four or five years, yeah. Yeah, I can see that too. That's happened with us. We joke about it. You know, she'll ask me to get something and I've got it in my hand or, you know, or I was mm. thinking about it. Um, in fact, we went out to the park a while ago and she said, look at this picture so-and-so sent me. And I was, or no, she said, look, look at this picture. And I, and I had it on my phone. You know, like, oh, wow. Well. So you know, yeah. how does that happen? Um, now, you talked about the golden child. You talk about the third energy and we can very much relate with that. Um, what does that look like? Is, what is that third energy? It's the inner child. He, yeah. yeah, he definitely bring because our background, even though we share the same interests, our background, family background is quite different. Very different yeah. um, my parents separated while his family is very loving, very, oh, yeah. <laughs> and being together bring out the inner children within us. And I definitely feel that whatever we're doing, whether we're gonna travel, whether we're gonna do something fun, we definitely feel this shared excitement of the inner child yeah. coming in. Because that inner child is very important, especially in today's life. You know, people take a lot of things very seriously mm. and delve too deep into energy sometimes. And where that, inner child energy brings out more of the playfulness, playfulness the carefreeness, you know, and the innocence makes you also more courage, courage comes out of just jumping into the void, you know, and do it, do it, yeah. don't have any expectations, just yeah. do it because it's going to be fun or it's going to be epic. It's going to be epic. You know, <laughs> you know? and, and no matter what the ride might be, it could be up, it could be down. The, mat, the thing is to look for the joy in both the dark and like yeah. depression energy yeah. or like the high happy energy. Yeah. There's joy in both yeah. sides. Yeah, and we went through rough times together. After we came back from the Amazon, we were planning to go to Nepal, but then my saving was stolen through online hacking. So that needs to be paused until I got it all back. And then after that, we got into a motorcycle accident. He yeah. had to go under the operation. Mm -hmm. And then eight weeks later, we both got dengue fever. <laughs> so it was like boom, yeah. boom, boom of, of that, that unexpected. Yeah, completely unexpected. <laughs> and I anger rise, anger rose within me because yeah. um, I expected to travel. I wanted to go to Nepal. Thank you. But then along that journey, there were so many people who helped us when we bumped into the taxi and we mm. rode off line in the middle of the road, there were just random earth angels came and helped us. Yeah, I like, like three day. guys just picking me up out of the street. I was just like, whoa, where did these guys yeah. come from? Yeah. But yeah, that was, we learned a lot from that. Yeah, we did. We, did. we, we did. had yeah. a lot of deep anger and also um, blaming of myself as well. Blaming one another. Blaming we one went another. Through that. Yeah. So, and, and that's, a, that's a great subject. I think that's a real world kind of thing. I mean, uh, how, how, did you, uh, how did you work that out? I mean, did you have daily discussions? I mean, um, did, you, did, you, did you look at it in an energetic sense? I mean, like, what's this, what's this trying to tell me? What's the universe trying to tell yeah, me? That's exactly what we did. We thought this is definitely, it's happened. There must be a reason behind it. There must be why we, because I mean, we were planning to go spend six months in Nepal. Yeah, we were planning and to travel. There was obviously a reason for this happening for us to stay in Bangkok where we are. 
and we need to figure out what it is that we need to do. And to be honest, I wouldn't be offering my energy servers and my art and my exactly. light language if I were traveling still. I got so you. it's a way of the universe telling me and Michael to stay grounded, mm -hmm. to stay where we are and, and doing what we do. Yeah, that's when you got your website started. Yeah, yeah. And her, yeah. your whole career just began from that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. I took that maybe that's part of that third energy, that golden child energy, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Just, just maybe it can speak to us a little bit louder so we don't have to go through the pain next time, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, and, 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 and it sounds like you guys have been through a lot. And I would imagine that you have, because all of the quote unquote light workers, whatever you want to call them, uh, aren't exactly mainstream anyway. So there's a lot of estrangement from friends and families and stuff like that and culturally and socially. Um, but how do you, how, do, how does, uh, how has fear been a factor in your relationship? I mean, and I don't mean like, I just mean in the normal course of life, we're all dealing with that and integrating that and transmuting that. But uh, how do y'all handle that as a couple? I don't fear that much, personally. I do feel more yeah. and I would tell him what I'm feeling and he would mm. hold me, hold, hold a space for me to go through and to release. Mm. Rarely he would feel and he would feel an intense energies like solstice energy, that intense. I feel more, I think basically because I do energy work every day. He, he working with children. I work with kids children. So yeah. I feel that he's where he's supposed mm. to be just encourage that love in the school scene. For me, I, I definitely feel more. I definitely feel more into my core. He would come home and I would be crying. But we, we talk about it. And there will yeah. be time when we fight. Mm -hmm. Not big ones, though. Yeah, not big ones. But then, <laughs> but then we, we realize, okay, we need to sit, let the ego decide and just talk about it. Yeah, put the yeah. ego. Yeah. yeah. Is that when you have to take a few moments or hours alone yeah go in yeah. solitude yeah it's okay to be out of alignment isn't it, it yes, is it's, yeah it's part it's, of life it's it's the, the circle of impermanence life. yeah impermanence seeking for stillness at all time is not balance no. you have to be i feel that we are as light workers getting used to that what we label as out of alignment, what we see as contradiction, and we make learning to make peace with that. And that's yeah. how anchoring our talk, our practice into human life. Yes, yeah. Always, and and yeah. don't fear it. Don't fear it, don't yeah. judge. Don't, yeah. yeah. Get to and, and go with the flow, basically. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like oh, that. See joy in everything. <laughs> see what? Always see the joy in everything. That's what yeah. I have. Yeah. yeah. And the humor. And the humor. Yeah. And the humor. humor. Yeah. Yeah. But it sounds like that triple initiation you went through <laughs> with the with the car, I mean with the motorcycle accident and the fever yeah. and stuff, uh, was good practice. Because you said there was some finger pointing, there was some blaming and and you had some guilt, you know, with the motorcycle yeah. and all that. It sounds like that was a good little exercise, although it probably wasn't easy at the time. Uh, did did you, I guess, since that point, do you see things, the way you're able to handle the out of alignments, are they smoother? Or there's less has to be said. You just kind of know you go this way, I'll go that way. And I'll meet you when we, you know, when we're uh, balanced. Yeah, we can definitely, um, yeah. we don't even need to talk. We can just feel the energies. Yeah, de definitely. I can, I can feel a little bit of tension and that's where, okay you in your space, I'm in my space, we'll talk about it when we're ready, and it usually doesn't take long. Yeah, yeah. especially sometimes I'll come home and she'll like straight away bring out the smudge stick, like, start smudging me. <laughs> 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 it's like, you got some funkiness, let's get rid of it. <laughs> so, That's funny. That's yeah. funny. I think <laughs> one, of the, one of the things that I picked up, thank God, early on, um, just because of who Morgan is and, and uh, was that old, let me fix it thing. You know, the mm -hmm. men had that in them, you know, she's got something wrong. Let me fix it. You know, yes. just, of course that doesn't work. And uh, 
that's that's probably the only thing I can offer. <laughs> but uh, other than the solitude, uh, and that you know, as as we've learned, really, again, she's led the way most of the way because I don't think my brain went that direction. Is to be actually be told what's happening, how's mm -hmm. it happening. It's okay to be out of alignment. You know yeah. what I mean? It's gotten we, easier and easier. We, exactly. we we learn a lot from the medicine journey as well. We learn a lot to don't worry about other person first. You're dealing with your own issue. You're dealing with your own purging. You're dealing with your own heaviness. But then again, you are aware that his presence is there. My friend is there always. I'm not alone. Yeah, it's yeah. about knowing that each everyone need their own space. It's about respecting the differences in each other's path. Yeah. And and I'm learning. I'm learning to judge less. I'm learning to be aware of of my anger more, of my fears more. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. The uh, the beautiful triggers, right? And again, who would you want to trigger you? But that who you love the most, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, very good. Oh, so yeah, let's uh, let me if you want, I can share these pictures from your. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just let's let's let everybody in on it. Let's see who. Let me find it. Okay, here we go. Yeah. So um. Yeah, you can show that. Let's see if I can. Oh, here we go. So that is, is that the ceremony there? Those sticks? They've got um, the uh, type of root yeah. that's in the Amazon is called Ahu Sasha, which is basically means fake garlic. Or false garlic. Or false garlic. Or mountain garlic. Yeah. Ahu Sasha is a very feminine spirit, a very purification, cleansing, and gentle spirit. It's not as intense as ayahuasca or frog medicine or any medicine out there that we have experienced. It's more focus on lucid dreaming. Um, that's yeah, what the I, focus is on. So what we did was we scraped those roots. And then with the scrapings, you put into a container with some water. And then the next morning, you drink the water from those scrapings. And it's, it is very garlicky taste. Um, also, I remember scraping and burnt to eyes. Like Burns into home. your eyes, but, yeah. but that's how the plant medicine communicate to you through yeah. scent, through physical senses. And you'd also take the roots and put it underneath the bed that you're yeah. sleeping as well to have more of a deep connection. Yeah. With you get the, the Ahosasha plant. Mm. There you I go. Had, yeah, I had yeah. it too small. I didn't, I didn't have it right. So on, on the top picture, there's Ilario. I call him daddy because yeah, he he's sees shaman. our shaman at the yeah. time when we done when we finish with volunteering and we just practically now guess for ceremony. That's Michael receiving Aho Sasha. That's me scraping it. And at the bottom right, that's how pungent it was. <laughs> Your face, the, yeah. the distance is, is stronger than garlic, it's stronger than onion. And let's just get a good look at that. <laughs> that's that's just that, that's my favorite photo yeah. that's just that's how powerful it is well i mean you were talking about the puking and the shitting i didn't know which was going on at that time no <laughs> it wasn't puking it wasn't that, shitting it was just, just me just like poor the it's poor, like so. it's like you're shopping 10 onions at the same time right, right. right, that, right. that's how powerful it was but i i left my body one night wow. during drinking I had of the other session. Yeah, I had that rebirth experience. I I communicated with fairies and I feel that it was also the combination of us being there for a long time and also uh -huh. the ayahuasca ceremony and eating clean, being in clean air and everything. Yeah, I think with the, with us being doing our six weeks of volunteering in the in, with the center and that mm. we connected more deeper with the jungle. And it's with like the plant home. medicines, it was like a home. Sure, so. Ah, so that top photo is our walk into the jungle. We took a van an hour and a half from Iquitos, and then we walk from the highway, and that so is 3K, a dry three k walk. Three and a half. Three and yeah. a half. Yeah, that is a dry day. We often had to walk through mud. 
with, yeah. with rubber boots, with socks. That is a dry day. That's a leisure walk. When it gets yeah. muddy, when it gets rainy, it gets difficult. And that's the mother wine. That, that's the ayahuasca. Oh, and what I interesting, see. yeah, what mm. interesting about ayahuasca is that she grows um, anti-clockwise spiral around the tree around yeah. the tree and that's oh, her that, that's a small one eh? yeah that's small yeah oh, that's yeah. fascinating that is fascinating that's yeah. absolutely they they brewed it with shakruna so mara ayahuasca feminine spirit shakruna masculine spirit together yeah helping the body absorb dmt from shakruna and then you get into your journey very powerful. That's mm -hmm. it there. That's the brew there, right? Yes, yeah, that's we, the brew there, yeah. we were lucky to visit the retreat before our volunteer started. And that's when they brewing. And this was about five weeks before we get to drink that. The one that the, the brew that we drank was being boiled down many times. And yeah. we were warned, the facilitator Very there powerful, say that yeah. it will be powerful medicine. I'm like, I'm ready for it, I'm ready for it. <laughs> I was puking my guts out. I got up to the point where I wish I could just bring my guts and rinse it and put it back in. <laughs> <laughs> but I learn a lot. I, I learn a lot from the journey. I, it's, I, no, I wouldn't exchange it for anything. I wouldn't wow. really puke a lot with the I was, I, a lot. I was going, purging through my backside more. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's nice and romantic. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's kambo or sapo. When we were there, they were calling it sapo, and it's a frog poison or frog medicine from Masse tribe, the tribe that locate too in the Ruvian region of the jungle. Mm. And what was amazing about that, it, because this medicine was collected through the tribe in that jungle, so it was fresh, it was pure. The frogs are there wild. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. that that for me was definitely the strongest medicine, stronger than ayahuasca. <laughs> was it really? Yeah, wow. it's it's not much of a visionary uh, medicine like ayahuasca, right? But when the poison's on you, they leave it onto you for about twenty minutes. They burn your skin first, and yes. then you mix, you mix your saliva with with the poison, and they don't kill the frog; they only call it. Traditionally, they call it through barking at night. They tied it and they scratch out the sweat. They, they tickle the, the frog. Yeah, they tickle the frog. Yeah, that's the that's painting. Same shirt. <laughs> same shirt. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> we mix it with saliva. Some facilitator out there mix with water, but I highly recommend mix with your saliva so your DNA merge with the medicine. Already before it goes into your... They'll burn your skin and then they'll apply the medicine onto your skin and that's when the spirit hits and merge with your body you feel that rise of temperature that rise of heartbeat you feel like you almost die but it does feel like you're dying yeah but what's being collected <laughs> within is all yeah. coming out yeah that controlling that toxicity that you know whatever it is is in your mm. body it all comes out i mean the first time i did it when we're in the jungle, I just closed my eyes and went into a deep meditation mm -hmm. because it was the only way to get away from that feeling that I was having. Because it literally does feel like you're dying. I mean, you you're sweating, your you feel your heart beating, your throat, and your head's pounding, and you just you're throwing up and throwing up and throwing up. And when I went into that deep meditation, I just remember seeing a full vision of an arm holding a fist covered in tattoos. And that for me was just like a vision of power that this wow. medicine has. Mm. And power, strength, and comfort mm. I got yeah. from it. Like, yeah. I've got you, you know, yeah. don't worry, I've got you. You can do this, get rid of what's not needed in your system. Mm. It's, it's a beautiful oh, it's beautiful story behind this medicine as well. If anyone mm. interested to check it out, I highly recommend read the book Sapo in My Soul. It's written by an American who brought this medicine into the modern world. In the this, this was the frog medicine, right? Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I met a lady. I did a, a little show at an expo in Salt Lake City, Utah, a couple of years ago. And I met a lady who had been, and she was probably about, I'd say 37, 38 years old. She had been on medication since she was like 12. Mm -hmm. uh, 
bi- uh, what is it, uh, bipolar, uh, mm-hmm. chronic depression, and then some physical things that happen like fibromyalgia and things like that, you know, that happen as a result of the neuro- neurological part. And she ended up, now these were Mormons, right? But she ended up going to Peru and started taking the frog medicine. Mm-hmm. And, you know, 10, 15 years later, she's certified and works with uh, medical doctors around the world, treating people, uh, prescribing the, uh, the method and supervising the, the, uh, the process of this frog medicine. She swore by it. She did a little show on it and it was very yeah. interesting. No, so, it was basically what it does. It it helps your body heal itself. Yeah, no, it, it activates it activates a lot of um, energy centers inside your body, as well as um, your own organs, your own immune systems, and senses. that, and your senses. It brings them and creates more strength in them yeah. for your own body to do its self healing. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind trying it. I would just have to get some adult diapers because I don't know that I would want to do. Oh, yeah. don't let just it free. Do it. Let it free. Oh, just do it while you're sitting on the toilet. Then start the the ceremony. I don't know. I don't know if I, Morgan. I don't know if Morgan I, would ever look at me the same. <laughs> no, I, I, I've never thought that I would purge both in, but I yeah. did. And I think I still got a photo of her crawling on all fours. Yeah. Yeah. Getting towards the toilet. <laughs> wow. So let me ask you one last thing. So how do you feel the, uh, the, uh, the plant medicines and the frog medicine, and how has that uh, been a part of your relationship or is it helped? It brings you? us closer together. It did bring us closer together because mm. we, we saw each other in each other's raw states, basically. Yeah. And just by seeing that and witnessing that mm. to each other, it, drew us closer to yeah. understanding each other more and on being, a physical and spiritual yeah. level and being there there's no distraction there's no facebook there's no wi-fi there's nothing, when yeah. anger comes up within him i can see when frustration comes up within me he can see it so it's is raw it's all coming down to that human experience yeah, yeah. which that's why we all here on this planet yeah. the experience yeah human mm. yeah right on man wow yeah. wow that was a very interesting uh, conversation i'm <laughs> i'm really thinking about this plant medicine thing now as it that's definitely a, that's an interesting interesting uh, spin on it but yeah. Uh, yeah. i don't know you guys uh, have any final words for uh, everybody i don't know if you uh, have any advice for any potential uh, soul partners or Anything like that? Um, my advice is try and um, the labels are there. Mm. It's, they're not going to go away, mm. but don't look too deep into the labels. Go deeper, more in the self feeling and self energies about the situations and about your soul partner. If you believe it's your soul partner. It's about treating it as a relationship. That's yeah. it. It's treating treating it as you spending your life now and connection now with another person, another human being, another soul. Exactly. If you want to make it work, compassion, forgiveness, patience. And, and communication. Communication, yes. And, mm. and for me, the big thing is let go of expectation. Yeah. Because Throw expectations out the window. Because it's not needed. <laughs> yeah, and, and trust that yeah. that we get together for reasons, whatever reason that might be. Wow. And experience mm-hmm. being the human. Yeah. That's why we're here. That's why it's we're okay here. to be human, isn't it? It is. It is. That's what we are. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the uh, what 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 to you uh, means more. I trust you, I love you. Both. 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 Okay. Both some people would some people would say trust more i guess but mm. i feel both way because if you trust a situation and trust a the person there's frequency of love yeah yeah i'm you and you and me yeah all in all <laughs> yeah. right on right on beautiful beautiful uh, collaboration thank you so much for letting us be part of it and honoring us with your presence yeah. Wishing you the very best always, and uh, 
Well, maybe we can collaborate again down the road. If you guys get any ideas, let me know. Let Morgan sure. know. Right. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> Take care. A pleasure wow. meeting you, Michael. Good to nice see you again. Yeah. Yep, see okay. you again. Bye. Okay. You take care. Bye-bye.